Hi everybody, David Brian Smith here for the 52 Weeks of Music blog. Today on the Red Couch Diaries, I'm going to talk about five things about Leonard Cohen that you probably did not know. That's coming up on this episode of the Red Couch Diaries. Hey, I hope you like the show today, and if you do, hit that subscribe button. Hi everybody, thanks for tuning back in. David Brian Smith here for the 52 Weeks of Music blog. A blog all about songwriting. It originally is about my journey, but it's really more about your journey and helping you become a better songwriter and understanding the structure of songs and just enjoying music just a little bit more. This week uh, we lost some really great folks, Leon Russell and also Leonard Cohen. And you know, 2016 has not been very kind to us on our artists. So many other actors that, you know, some people just say that 2016 just sucks. Uh, it was very difficult for me with the death of Bowie and of Prince. And, you know, socks, 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 2016, sucks. But I don't believe that. I believe it's all about what you, what you think about it. And, you know, people die all the time. So... If you're worried about people dying on you, maybe you should appreciate them while they're here. Ooh, words of wisdom from the Red Couch. But I'd like to talk to you about five things that you may or may not have known about Lou, uh, <laughs> You may not have known about Leonard Cohen, Jewish Canadian songwriter, which you might not have known that he was Jewish. Uh, and all of his songs about religious and faith and political and stuff like that. And um, he was he was raised Jewish and still celebrated the Sabbath on his tours. So one of the things that you might not have known about him, number one, that there are about 80 verses to the song Hallelujah. 80 plus verses and it's a song that took him about five years to write number two john cale did a version of the song and asked leonard for the rest of the lyrics and leonard sent him 15 pages of lyrics cale said he just picked the cheekiest ones and went with it i don't know that thing number three I'm going to have to read this off. This is from Wikipedia, and I got a couple of these stuff. Uh, Cohen was inducted into both the Canadian Music Hall of Fame and the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame, as well as the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He was a companion of the Order of Canada, the nation's highest civilian honor, and in 2011, he received one of the Prince of Australia's Awards for Literature and the Ninth Glenn Gould Prize. He won them. He's an award-winning songwriter. Not quite sure what he won it for. Award-winning, like lots of them, or, you know, a few. Number four, and this, this I find is really cool. He was once asked by the son of Leon Weisseltier, I believe that's how you say his name, uh, is there anything that inspired you to create Hallelujah? And this is what Leonard came back with. This is a fifth grader, right? I wanted to stand with those who clearly see God's holy, broken world for what it is and still find the courage or the heart to praise it. You don't always get what you want. You're not always up for the challenge. But in this case, it was given to me, for which I am deeply grateful. One of the things that Leonard said about songwriting is that we don't get to create the songs. The songs just flow in and we kind of write them down. And as a songwriter, I, I have to admit, I, I'm writing a song, a tribute song to for Leonard. It's very similar to Hallelujah. And the, the name popped into my mind of Jambalaya. You can even sing it for Hallelujah. Jambalaya, Jambalaya. See, it fits. Okay. Here's something cool. This is this is something that's a little bit beyond number five. Uh, in 1948, he went to Westmont High School where he studied music and poetry. Um, he also involved himself actively in curriculum, extracurricular activities like photography, the theater club, and get this, cheerleading. <laughs> Leonard Cohen was a cheerleader. Hallelujah! <laughs> 
he also learned to play guitar about that time, and he attributes his love of music to his mother. She was Russian and sang songs around the house, and I know that those songs changed me. Those melodies touched me very much, he would say. She would sing with us, and when I took my guitar into a restaurant and some friends, my mother would come, and we'd often sing all night long. Isn't that a pretty picture? Leonard Cohen playing guitar and singing with his Russian mom. I think it's a pretty picture. In 1967, this is a couple of extra things and just throw it in there because it's, uh, you know, I just thought it was interesting. In 67, disappointed with his financial success as a writer, he moved to the United States and pursued a career as a folk singer and songwriter. He got in touch with Bob Dylan and, and some of the other people of the, of the day. Um, his song, Suzanne, became a hit for Judy Collins, uh, who also covered, you know, some other songs that he did. And, he, uh, Collins will recall that when she first met him, he said he couldn't sing or play the guitar, nor did he even think that Suzanne was even a song. <laughs> and then he played Suzanne for Judy, and Judy says, Leonard, you must come with me to this big fundraiser I'm doing. Jimi Hendrix is on it. And he never sung like that in front of a large audience before. Said he got out on stage, started singing, and everybody was going crazy, and they loved it, and he just stopped halfway through and walked off stage and the crowd went crazy they demanded he come back and I demanded he come back Judy says and and uh, he says she says I'll go out there with you so both Judy Collins and Leonard Cohen go out and sang and of course that was the beginning of a beautiful relationship singer songwriter career for them uh, she says about him people think Leonard is dark but actually his sense of humor and his edge on the world is extremely light. And I think that's one of the things, I'm getting a little emotional now. Um, I think that that's, shit. I think that that's one of the things that touches me most, is uh, he never had to sing up high. I, I have to raise my voice. I, I can't sing my songs in a low, gravelly voice like, I, I can't sing my songs in a low, gravelly voice like Leonard did. I, I have to get up higher in the range and, and try to hit those high notes. And Leonard just was Leonard. And I think that he has a very dark sense of humor, but a very light and humbling attitude on life. And I think that's what made him very dear to his closest friends. Last things. Last things about him. Hallelujah was first re released on various positions in 1984, and he sang it during a European tour. The song had limited success, and then J.J. Kale, uh, John Cale did a, did a cover of it, which formed the basis for Jeff Buckley's cover, which incidentally, here's a, here's a, here's a Jeff Buckley trivia fact. When he covered the song, he, he pulled out some of the verses that he knew, and he really targeted it towards the human condition and the orgasm. That's right. He also said later on, because he played it all the time, closed his shows with it, he said that he was very embarrassed and felt that he actually desecrated the song by using those imageries, and he hoped that Leonard would never ever hear the song as he recorded it. And I don't know whether he did or not, because Jeff died shortly after that. Um, so you never can know exactly you know, how life is going to treat you. But uh, I thought it was interesting that you know that Jeff would say that about Leonard. But last but not least, uh, almost 200 artists, of course, last but not least, almost 200 artists of various religions and faiths and ethnicities and places around the world have recorded this song. It is one of the most recorded and played songs in American history. In fact, it was so much that towards the latter part of the 90s, uh, Leonard just asked that he had no one else cover the song. But they did. So, uh, you know, he's still making that money off it. Royalties. Uh, so that's five things or more that you may or may not have known about Leonard Cohen, and I hope that you are a little more in tune with this great artist and, and his songwriting uh, process and his philosophies on life. I hope that you go out and enjoy your day today and remember the people in your life that make a difference because they could be gone at any second.
So I'm David Brian Smith with the 52 Weeks of Music blog. Remember, I believe in you. I know that you can do anything you set your mind to. And I hope you hit that subscribe button and uh, watch some of my other videos. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. I really do believe in you and want you to be a better songwriter. So hit the subscribe button and follow my blog.